For a meditation today, I would like to speak to you from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 12, verse number 32. The Bible says, Men of Issachar, who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their letters under their command. The Bible speaks something very beautifully about the men of Issachar. As the writer was uh, talking about so many tribes, when he was about to mention about Issachar, he passed for a moment, and something unique about the men of Issachar really touched his heart. The Bible says the men of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. I believe, you know, spiritually this is an awesome, beautiful ability in the spirit to know the seasons and to understand them as God brings it on our way even much before its arrival. My friend, the Bible says men of Issachar understood the time. The Bible says the men of Issachar, they understood the time. Not only that, they knew exactly what Israel should do. They had this spiritual and divine awareness in their spirit. And I believe with all my heart, this is a supernatural ability that is given to the tribe of Issachar. About 200 men, before the season could come, they were able to be proactive in their mind and their spirit and be able to cast the season and totally be equipped and empowered to meet the season in order to make use of the season. Because God had given them the ability to understand it much ahead of time. You have failed in many areas of your life because you did not really understand the time that God has appointed for you. The Bible says so beautifully our God is a God of times. The Bible says he does not do anything without first involving his time. The Bible says God does everything so beautifully in his appointed time. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible, as you keep on reading, the Bible says uh, when the time fulfilled, uh, God did this, God did that. God is the God of times. My dear friend, even in the life of Jesus, you can see that very clearly. He was very powerful in what he did because he was sensitive about God's timing upon his life. And as you're listening to me, I want you to pass for a moment and really ask yourself this one question. Am I sensitive to the time that God has placed upon my life? Today in this world, a lot of people, they run ahead of God's time. And they fail miserably. They go about wasting their time, their resources, their gifts and talents and so on and so forth. Just because they don't really understand the time that God has appointed for them. Think for a moment my dear friend. Just because you have resources, you are capable of doing something. It doesn't mean that you can just go ahead and do it. Because my Bible says, uh, no matter what you sow in terms of your investments, in terms of your actions, your effort, your labor, ultimately the increase comes from the Lord. I've seen a lot of potential people, capable people, talented people, experienced people failing in their life miserably because they do not have the right understanding about God's appointed time in their lives. May I repeat this? Just because you have talents, 
your experience, your resources, your finances. It doesn't mean that you can just go about doing anything you want to do. You need to pause for a moment and ask God, Lord, is it the right time appointed by you in my life? Jesus knew he was the son of the living God. He had all the power in heaven above and on earth and under the earth. He knew, as the Bible says, his name is the name about every other name. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. But you wouldn't find Jesus, the Son of the Living God, do any have abuse of power or his ability. He always focused on doing the will of the Father. Not only that my Bible says that he would wait for God's time upon his life. Our God is the God of seasons. The Bible so beautifully talks about Jesus Christ. In the Gospel according to St. John chapter 2. As we all know, the first miracle he ever did in the wedding of Cana. They were running out of wine. And the mother of Jesus, Mary, told Jesus, the wine is gone. They do not have any more wine. Then Jesus looked at his mom, mother. John chapter 2 verse 4 says like this, Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. Why do you involve me? My time has not yet come. What he was trying to say is, I cannot get involved unless until it is the time appointed for me by the Almighty God to do a miracle. This is a powerful revelation. Yes, there is a need in that wedding. They were running out of wine. There was some shortage. They desperately needed some miracle. But Jesus was determined that he would not be led by the circumstances or just by seeing the need. But he will wait for the right time that God has appointed on his life. He said, my time has not yet come. My friend, I want to let you know. You cannot blame the situation. You can't say, I had to do it because the situ situation compelled me to do it. You need to wait upon God for His time. Don't run ahead of God. Don't run ahead of God. Let me say in the name of Jesus. You got to wait. You need to move as God moves. You need to align yourself in the perfect will of God. God's timing in your life is very important. In fact, I believe two things are very important. God's principle that he has mentioned in the word. That's number one. Number two is God's timing. You can do the right thing, but if you do it in a wrong time, it would be totally wrong. You can say some good things, but if you say in a wrong context, it would be a bad thing. I pray in the name of Jesus, as you listen to the word, maybe you are listening with a sense of failure in your life. You may be telling yourself, yes, I'm talented. I'm gifted. I have my own resources. I'm capable of doing a lot of things, but still I have failed. I want to tell you, Wait for the timing of God upon your life. Jesus said, my time has not yet come. Hallelujah. Beloved people of God, you cannot hurry up God because you are desperate for a miracle. You need to trust the sovereignty of God. It may look like the situation is going from the bad to worse. But let me tell you prophetically, in the name of Jesus, no situation can ever put a demand on God to do anything about anybody or this situation. 
I believe we need to just trust the sovereignty of God, the power of God, and wait for His right time in your life. A lot of people have made decisions. They acted foolishly because the situation was demanding them to do so. Be led by the Spirit and not by what you see. Lot was led by what he saw, but Abraham was led by the Spirit of God. I hope to somebody it makes a perfect sense. The timing of God is very, very important in your life. In the book of Ecclesiastes, when you read Ecclesiastes, the word of the Lord says, God does everything beautifully in his appointed time. Ecclesiastes 3.11 The chapter begins like this. There is a time for everything. A season for every activity under the sun. There is a time for everything. And a season for every activity under heaven. Glory to God. You need to ask God, Lord, I want to move and operate and do and decide and maximize when you bring the right seasons, when you move me into your rightly appointed seasons in my life. And that's when you see success in your life. My friend, the Bible says so beautifully, he has made everything beautiful in its time lot of people they are failures in their lives because they do not follow the time of God in their life two things you can never compromise the principles of God that he has given in the word and the number two is the timing of God both are equally important in your life and God is actively involved in your life saying he has made everything so beautifully in his time. In other words, you can't get God involved in your life, in your family, in your business if you just move away from his time. God says, my son, my daughter, I'm willing to get involved and be a partner in your life. I can bless you. I can bless your family. I can bless your business. I can bless the work of your hands provided if you do everything in my time. I have a season appointed in your life for everything. You need to learn to be sensitive to God. You got to be waiting for the right time that God has placed upon your life. Let me say, don't run ahead of God. My friend, don't run ahead of God. Keep in step with the Spirit. An amazing thing the Bible talks about in the book of Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7. Even the stalk in the sky knows the appointed seasons and the dow, the swift and the thrush observe the time of their migration but my people do not know the requirements of the Lord but my people do not know the requirements of the Lord even the stork in the sky knows the appointed seasons amazing it's not only about human beings. God had even put a sense of timing even in a birds like Stark. It knows its appointed seasons. And the dove and the swift and the thrush observe the time of their migration. All these beautiful birds have been given wisdom by God to do something in their life when they sense the right timing. My friend, the timing of God is very important. Even the birds observe that. They move according to the seasons that God has appointed in their lives. 
But God says here, but my people do not know the requirements of the Lord. My people do not know the requirements of the Lord. In other words, they do not know my appointed seasons in their lives. Our God is willing to communicate to our hearts the different seasons before those seasons could come into your life. A lot of people, they do not ask God about their future. When actually God brings those seasons in their life, they are not prepared to welcome it. They are not equipped and empowered to maximize the opportunities that God will bring in that particular season. I have seen people wasting God-given opportunities because they were not prepared. As you are listening to me, I believe the Holy Spirit supernaturally will communicate that seasons in your life. In fact, you can welcome those seasons, being fully equipped and empowered. You can get ready now for those seasons that God prophesied over your life. Get ready now. Hallelujah. Let me say in the name of Jesus, the heaven would refuse to get involved when you go out of God's timing in your life. God says, I'm willing to get involved and make everything so beautiful if only you are willing to learn about my timing. Wait for my hour. When God moves, you got to move. Your eyes must be fixed upon Jesus. A lot of people all around may say a lot of things advising you. But my question here is, do you hear from God? Jesus said, my sheep will listen to my voice. And they will follow me. Sometimes we lack direction from God because we are not listening to God. When you don't listen to God, I want to tell you, you are left to assume things. Imagine things. But my Bible says, when you listen to God, as Jesus said, my sheep will listen to my voice and they follow me. Let me say in Jesus' name, you can follow Jesus by listening and the steps of the righteous man are ordered of God. Your steps must be ordered of God. Listening to God is very, very important in your life. Hope somebody is listening to what I'm saying. The word of the Lord is coming prophetically to you right now, tonight in Jesus' name. Don't go by what you see. Go by what you listen. As Jesus said, it's simple. My sheep listens to my voice. In other words, you are connected to Jesus Christ, our almighty God, not by seeing, but listening. Hallelujah. The Bible talks of a little boy called Samuel. He was willing to listen from God. He said, Lord speak, for thy servant is listening. Sometimes we are like busybodies. No, we go about doing a lot of things. We don't find time to really sit and listen to God. My friend, I want to ask you one question honestly. When it was the last time you could really say, God spoke to you and you could listen from God. You may be now worried and be anxious about many things, but it doesn't help. Keep on being busy. It doesn't do any good to us. The Bible talks about Martha. She was busy doing a lot of things. And she was upset and worried and she was anxious. Jesus looked at Martha and said, Martha, Martha. You are worried about many things. Only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen something that will never be taken away from her. What Mary was doing. She was seated at the feet of Jesus and she was listening to Jesus. My friend, you need to know how to get God involved in your personal life. If you want that to happen, you must listen to his voice. You must train yourself to listen to him like Mary being seated at the feet of God, listening to his voice. When you do things in his time, let me say, heavens are going to get involved 
in your personal life. The favor of the Almighty God will come descending upon you. We all need direction from God. Direction comes from listening to God. Hallelujah. No man can give you any direction. We know the now and the beginning. But we do not know about the future. The Bible says God knows the end from the beginning. Praise you Jesus. And he is willing to speak to you. He wants to unveil about the appointed seasons in your life before those seasons could come. He would like to equip you with the power of his word, with the wisdom of his word. So that you can maximize the season that God has appointed in your life. I want to pray right now in Jesus name that like men of Issachar. You're going to ask God for the special wisdom of knowing the seasons, understanding the seasons, and being able to be decisive to do what must be done in that season. My friend, God can anoint you now. When you bend your knees down and be left alone with God in the secret chamber of prayer and knock on the doors of heaven and say, God, I want to hear from you, Lord. You are a God who speaks uh, even now. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even now, you are the great I am. God of Moses, God of Joshua, you speak to me, Lord. I want to hear from you. I need direction in my life. Isaiah 48 something so beautifully says, God says, uh, I will teach you what is best for you. And I will direct you in the way you should go. Praise to Jesus. That particular verse talks about two things. Uh, instruction and direction. What comes first is the instruction of the Lord. Unless you are taught by God. Unless you are taught by God, you can never understand His direction in your life. Hope you understand what I'm talking about. Instruction and direction can never be separated. In fact, the direction comes from the instruction. That's why David says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Psalm 119, 130, Psalm is so beautifully says, The unfolding of your word brings forth light. Glory to God. I sense the anointing of God. My friend, the word of God is, is the book of success in your life. Psalm 1, you read so much, so beautifully. The Bible says that the one who takes delight in the word of God and meditates upon the word of God day and night, he is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Finally it says, what he does will be successful and is going to bear fruit in every season. May I encourage you to seek the face of God and ask for the supernatural ability. God, like men of Issachar, I want to understand the time and exactly know what must be done in every season that you bring across my life. Your life will be highly productive. Forget about the days of failure. Forget about the days that have gone by. But now, let there be a turning point. Be connected to the voice of God. Be connected to the shepherd. Keep listening to his voice. Train yourself to, to listen to the voice of God and follow Jesus. Your life will never be the same. I want to pray with you right now that you may join with me and agree concerning the word. First Chronicles 12, 34, 32. Like men of Issachar, Lord, give me that special ability to understand the time that I, mo that I may know the exact thing that I should be doing. You can ask God, Lord, give me that wisdom like the men of Issachar to know and to understand the time 
and exactly do what must be done in my life. I want to pray with you. The Bible says when two of you agree about anything here on earth in my name, the Lord said, I shall do it. I'm going to pray with you right now. You can join with me. Let us pray together. You will, while I'm praying, the Holy Spirit power will come upon your life and touch you. You'll move from failure to success. You'll move from disappointment to victory, from frustration to joy and happiness. Your life will not be the same. You can join with me, my friend, my sister, whatever you are, as you're listening to the message, right in your homes, maybe in your office, whatever you are. You can just lift your hand and pray along with me. I'm going to ask God to unleash his supernatural anointing and the spiritual ability to know and understand the seasons, God's appointed seasons in your life that you may maximize that season, the opportunities that God brings forth on your way and be highly productive and be successful in your life. Shall we pray? Loving God, our gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, God, for my brothers and my sisters in Jesus' most powerful name. Lord, the Bible talks about the men of Issachar who understood the time and they knew exactly what Israel should do. There are a lot of people, oh God, as they listen to me, as they are praying with me, they do not have any sense of direction. Some of them, they are met with failures one after the other. I pray in the name of Jesus, right now in agreement, that you will touch them, Lord. Right now I pray the heavens will be opened above them. Fill them with the Holy Spirit of God. I pray according to Isaiah 11 verse 2. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. In Jesus name. Fill them with the spirit of wisdom. They may know the right time. And act accordingly being led by the holy spirit and i pray oh god their path will be lit by the light of god's word let your word unfold oh god let your word be a lamp unto their feet and light unto their path i pray in jesus name they shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of god i speak success in their life i speak victory Every sense of anxiety, O oh God, every spirit of fear, I break its power right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of depression in Jesus' name, leave people now. Victory is awaiting them when they walk with you and move according to your timing in their life. I bless them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.